All right, we're going to look for the eigenbasis for the following matrices. So I'm going to start by finding my eigenvalues. So I know that determinant of a minus lambda i has to be 0. So I'm going to end up with 10 minus lambda, negative 9, 4, negative 2 minus lambda. I want to set that equal to 0. Multiplying these out, I'll have negative 20 minus 10 plus 2 minus 8 lambda plus lambda squared minus negative 36 plus 36 is 0. So lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 16 lambda minus 4 squared. So I only have one eigenvalue this time. My eigenvalue is repeated. It's 4. So now I'm going to try and find my null space. So for lambda equals 4, I'm going to have a minus lambda i x equal to 0. So 6, negative 9, 4, negative 6, x is 0. And let me put in my x, y, actually. OK. I can see that these rows are multiples of each other, so I can pick just one of them. So 6x minus 9y is 0. This means that y is equal to 6 over 9x, or 2 thirds x. Therefore, my null space is going to be, or my, my solution to the homogeneous equation is going to be 1 2 thirds t. And we exclude 0 for the solution to the homogeneous equation. My null space would include 0. My eigenbasis is going to be the vector 1 2 thirds or any equivalent multiple. All right. Now we're looking for the eigenbasis for our identity matrix. So starting off the same way, we're going to go through this. And I'm going to tell you that our lambda value ends up being 1. For this value of lambda, I would end up with the 0 matrix. So. This is interesting because I have the zero matrix here. That means both x and y are independent variables. It doesn't matter what they are. So my vector x, y, my solution vector, is going to be 1, 0 plus 0, 1. And I can have any multiple, and they don't have to be the same multiple. It's why I'm not using t and s. So that means my eigenbasis is R2. Or we could say it's the linear span of 1, 0, 0, 1. I love this one. Super interesting.